What's up, everybody? My name is Peter Del Tondo. I'm a design director and product designer over at Unfold, and I'm your host for the daily creative challenges here in Adobe XD. And we've got a really exciting project today. We're going to be um, building out an email newsletter, and I'm going to encourage you to design something that you are passionate about uh, and that is maybe a hobby of interest to you. Uh, so make sure to have some fun with this. Insert a little bit of your personality and um, we're gonna have a blast. Uh, you might be watching this uh, this stream, uh, I guess pre-recorded now, um, as we're taking off uh, today in support of Blackout Tuesday. Uh, and just really quickly to touch base on this, I can't even believe that, that we need to take a moment um, to, to still say something like hate has no place. And uh, I'm, I'm shocked at the things that are going on in the world. And, and I just want you to know wherever you are, that you are loved, you are important, um, and that you are valuable. And uh, appreciate that you're, you're here. And uh, I hope that you're doing okay. And whoever needs to hear that, um, if you need to chat, want to have a conversation, DM me on Discord, um, talk to any members here of the Adobe team. Uh, we're here for you and, and we love you all. So thank you for, for that. Let's jump into some design stuff uh, and uh, let's see what we're doing. Uh, so today, as I mentioned, we are going to be building out uh, an email newsletter and again, put something in here that, that you're excited about. Uh, and what we're going to be learning about in today's example is how to use the content uh, uh, aware layout and responsive resize to quickly create mobile and desktop versions of your designs. And this is one of the cool features in Adobe XD that I think cuts out a, a good, you know, 50 to 80% of the work once you go to start res resizing screens. It's not perfect and there will still be some things that you need to manually adjust, but it will quickly get you to where you need to go um, and, and hopefully have minimal lift and effort to refine that later. So let's uh, let's come down here and let's take a look at some inspiration stuff that we've got. Um, I, I think Wayno does a great job on their email newsletters. And just as, as we look at this, email newsletters are simple. They're not overly extravagant. They're not overly busy. So really think about that as you look at these to how do we get these or the information that they want and need uh, and, and make it something that they want to engage and, and participate in. With that said, um, if you have not already, make sure you go and join the XD Discord over at bit.ly slash XD Discord. Um, and that's gonna be where we're gonna come in and have some great conversations about uh, your projects. And we're gonna go and myself and the other mentors uh, will be giving you feedback on your challenges throughout this series. Um, and this is something that goes on all the time. It's not just this week. Um, I will, it's Tuesday today as I record this, it'll be Wednesday when you see it. Um, so I won't be streaming tonight and doing the, the feedback reviews, but I will be back at it tomorrow. Uh, and so tomorrow today for you, uh, here on the third, uh, make sure that you go in and you submit your project here. If you tag me, I go through those that I've been tagged in first, and then we'll go through the list and, um, and check those out. And so if, if you would, um, I'll type it out here so you can see it since we don't have the, the chat necessarily. Uh, if you go to behance.net slash Peter Del Tondo, that's my personal profile page, uh, go ahead there, follow me on Behance and you'll get a notification when I go live. Um, but I usually go live sometime in the evenings, really anywhere between about 6.30 to eight o'clock at night, um, most often, and we'll jump in. And for an hour or two, we'll just run through these reviews and feedback. Um, and you can always watch these replays. I'll tag you with where I timestamped you in the video. And uh, if you happen to be on too, join me in chat. Let's talk through the project a little bit more, push back on any feedback. Let's have a conversation and see if we can help and level y'all up as designers. All right, let's get back into today. Uh, so um, I don't know about the rest of you. I am really looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077. Um, it's just going to be fantastic. This is a game that is brought from a, a you know, amazing design studio, which little fun tidbit over here, just from a pronunciation, I had to like triple check this to make sure I was right. It is pronounced CD Project Red rather than CD Project Red. And I probably still butchered that somewhat, um, but they are the amazing gaming studio that brought, um, you know, things like the Witcher series, uh, and 
they're like one of the top uh, game companies in the world right now. And they just do a fantastic job in terms of quality and experience. Um, everything that we aim for from like a UI and UX experience and our work, that's what these guys do for a video game. So I'm really excited about it. It's going to be super immersive and uh, I think it's just going to be a fantastic game. It was supposed to come out, I believe, last month, but got delayed, and or two months ago, got delayed, I think, till September. Um, so in the meantime, I thought we'd amp up some of the hype and uh, get ready for this thing. So um, what we want to do today is create a newsletter for a photography contest. Um, and so, you know, what we want to do is set up our artboard. And most typically, uh, email artboards are set up at a width of 600. The height doesn't matter, but I would set your artboard here to 600. Uh, then what we want to do is we want to start laying out our information a little bit. And so what I might want to do is I'm going to just grab this, this text that I have over here, um, and I'll just put this off to the side at the moment. So something like this. Uh, and I want to bring the size down a little bit. This is a little large for me. Let's maybe go a little something like that. Okay, that looks good. So next, uh, we'll bring in like a nice hero image here. Um, and I will we'll go 48, 48. Um, and I could maybe even tuck that in a little bit more. Let's go 40, 40, just to give ourselves a little bit more room. That eight pixel grid. I know everyone hears me talk about so much. Hopefully it's just getting through and you're like, yeah, eight pixel grid, that's where it's at. All right, so next I'm gonna drop in my text. And again, we'll set that up to 40 Go there and we'll spread that out so it's even. So let's do 520. All right, that looks good. Nice and consistent there. I'll move this up. Okay, and then we've just got some cool images here. Um, and I can just pull these over at the moment. All right, so we've got that. And now I think it'd be great to, to do, um, you know, maybe another full image or we want to get the users to enter in. So maybe what I want to do, I've already got this kind of like hot yellow color that I've pulled from this, um, but let's maybe just create some interesting stuff here in this. Let's turn that off and let's grab this like blue color. Perfect. And I want that as the fill, my bad. I don't think that came off as hot as I wanted. Let me grab a hex. There, there you are. All right, let's grab that hex code. That's what I want. Something a little bit more vibrant. And I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to tuck that down. Let's go with like four. That works for now. All right, and then um, we could do one of these uh, photos here. I kind of like this dark one, um, just to give it a little bit more space. Let's see, let's tuck that into the artboard. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger just to crop out that Xbox, kind of focus on the space a little bit more. Make it a little bit larger, something like that. All right, that works there. Actually, let's keep that in. Something like that, Xbox E3, that works. And uh, and the next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna turn this off real quick because I just wanna pull this down as we skip ahead to maybe some of the teasers. Um, you know, we could do an image like this. I might wanna darken this up. I'm gonna leave that out for the moment. And let's throw our button on top of here. All right. And we'll pull this up. We could do a little text at the bottom if we want. I'm um, just kind of like your standard uh, unsubscribe and things like that. But I'm going to leave that out for the moment. And I'm just going to put this in here. We'll center that up. All right, great. OK, cool. So now that I've got this, um, I want to just quickly create a second version of it. And the reason is, 
is the kind of overall vibe and theme of this game works really well with a dark theme as well. So what I might want to do is have a second option with this just to play around that has that dark UI. So again, I'm just going to come into like an off black. And I mean, that, that looks really good. Um, I think that fits really nicely with these photos too. And I, I kind of prefer that version actually over, you know, just use that color, um, over the light UI. So, you know, let's, let's run and roll with that and we can get started there. Um, let's come in and I'm going to turn off responsive resize, bring this down to there. All right. So now here's where things are going to start to get interesting is if I want, I can move this item over, move these over a bit. And we know that say, I want to bring this into, um, you know, a 375 width. Uh, and what that's going to allow me to do is quickly expand this out to say a mobile device or maybe to a tablet um, where I'm looking for something more like 768. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build two of these and we'll really quickly start off. I'm going to turn on responsive resize and you see how this is on all of these items I and mean, I've got auto and manual and I can come in and I can interact with these more to like anchor things where I want it to fix left or fix right. But for the most part, I like to use this on manual because it's gonna quickly get me towards the solutions that I'm looking for. So what I wanna do here is now, I'm just gonna pull this in and I wanna hit a 375 width. And we're gonna see what works and also what doesn't work. Cause again, this isn't a completely perfect solution, but it does help you get started in the right direction. So really quickly here, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start tucking this in. And what do we see happening is we see some items quickly and, and properly um, expanding in, um, but some items, as we see like that top photo, isn't really carrying over perfectly. So I'm gonna pull this out and let's go to 375. And now it's doing some things well, like this image didn't necessarily move in and centered. So we'll take a second and we'll recenter that. I'll do that visually. Um, here we've still got that 4040. All of this worked really well, but over here, this image isn't going to stack um, side by side. So we don't necessarily want them to crunch um, because if we did, what we would get is something more like this, where it gets really small and it's a little harder to see. And so that actually doesn't look too bad. I might keep it, but you might also want to do something where say, this just fills the space and it's only one image. Um, but this is where, again, not a completely out of the box solution, but I'll come in here and I'll move that up. I'm gonna move these items up so that way it touches. And now notice that it kept the button nice and centered, but this image, again, I'm just gonna kind of pull that back in and have that feel right. I'm gonna turn off this and really quickly just a few clicks but now I've got that mobile uh, design as well and if I want to come in here just so we see how this operates differently for something say like a tablet I'm going to expand this and we're going to go to let me make sure it's turned on we're going to go to 768 and so once again we see some things operating correctly some it's not able to fully detect and see those differences so if I come here to 768, I'm gonna come in and we'll wanna manually make a couple of changes. So really quickly, I'm gonna come in, I'll expand this. We might want to increase the font size here on these items um, so we could play around with some things there because we could develop this um, utilizing M's or REMS and that's gonna be more of like a scaled formula rather than a specific size. So, you know, let's bump this back up. Maybe something in these lines. Something like that looks good. And now we'll, we'll go from the bottom. So once again, the button here is scaled nicely. I'm just gonna have to move this up manually. Those didn't quite scale right, but we'll grab this. The blue bar worked perfectly, but we'll grab this item. We're just gonna move this over and now
fix that little pixel off. We'll cheat that and we're gonna send that to back. Okay, and so we're gonna grab these items, move these down so that it's 40 from this text, that scaled right. Boom, there we go. And then I'm gonna turn off that responsive resize, bring this item down, kind of center that up to how I want it. And boom, now in just a matter of moments, we've been able to quickly create these three different uh, screen sizes and resolutions. So maybe this is like a standard desktop browser view. We've got something if I was browsing in full screen on say a tablet, as well as mobile responsive. And these things, again, just make it really, really easy to work with. Um, so hopefully this gives you a little bit of a gauge in how you can start to utilize responsive resize to quickly scale your screens from page to page. Um, and again, it's not gonna handle things like stacking items or, or restructuring different columns. If you've got say a, a three fourths, one fourth website with maybe like a bar on the side, it's not gonna handle that quite the way that we want yet. I'm sure the Adobe team is working on all the AI needed to create that kind of uh, system. But in the meantime, we're able to quickly modify some things that we keep padding, we keep sizing, we keep even margins between items. And it's just a really easy and effective way to quickly um, create these different mockups and save you a ton of time. If something can get you 50% of the way there, 80% of the way there, that's a huge, huge time saver. So I hope that this has helped you guys understand these mechanics a little bit. Really excited to see what you do with your newsletters. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be said right now. Maybe you can utilize one of these challenges um, to create a, a newsletter to take some action to, uh, um, to share some love and, and hope going on in the world. So I'm really excited to see what you all do with this challenge. Um, again, we're going to post these here in the Adobe XD Discord channel in the current uh, current challenge channel um, and I'll be back tonight as you're watching this and uh, doing some reviews afterwards so make sure you guys submit those um, thank you all for tuning in and uh, make sure you check out uh, the next challenge here tomorrow at 2 p.m pacific standard time and we'll catch you then